Hello, welcome to News Click. You're watching Present, Past and the Future, and I am Nilanjan Mukhopadhyay. There is actually nothing wrong if in the political lexicon new words get added. In the last five years, however, we have a new word in the Indian political lexicon, Bhakt. Now, Bhakt in Indian politics for the last five years essentially means somebody who is an admirer of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. An admirer, I am using this word, not somebody who is a supporter. The difference between being a supporter and an admirer is that an admirer is supposed to be blind, a supporter can be a qualified supporter. There is a tradition of personality cult in Indian politics. However, the BJP, the Bharti Janta Party was spared of this right from the beginning of its origins, whether in as BJP from 1980 or even previously. In the last five years, however, there has become a fashion within this political party to destroy internal democracy and glorify and deify the leader of the party. It's something unprecedented and not very good for the culture of the party, but that's besides the point. Now, when we talk about bhakti, there is a long tradition of bhakti in Indian culture, in Indian mind space. It has evolved, but what we are seeing now is a kind of a vulgarization. What does this show of us as a nation, but more importantly, what does it show what is happening of the Indian political leaders who like it when they are glorified, when tables are thumped in their names in most important institutions of this country, important, most significantly the Indian parliament. All these is happening in a very unprecedented manner. Now to discuss this with me, uh, I have today uh, Professor Harbans Mukhya, very noted uh, you know, historian. Professor Pushota Magarwal, who is also possibly requires very little introduction, somebody who's also studied bhakti from the critic's point of view. So his PhD, if I'm not wrong, it was on bhakti. So let me begin with you, Pushotam. You know, when we use this word bhakti, it is used very loosely in a political context, but there is a certain huge cultural and spiritual context in Indian tradition. Could you start by help by locating the idea of bhakti and as to how it, the process of vulgarization possibly began? Well, if you go into the historical evolution of the idea of bhakti, initially the term bhakt or the term bhakti denoted a sense of participation and swearing. Right. If you go by the Nirukta of Yask, there Indra, De, Indra, Agni and Marot and Varun, all the Vedic deities, they are described as bhakt of each other. Because when you offer something in offering in a yajna, right. you offer it in the name of Indra, but then Agni has also his share into it, and so on. So Indra is Agni's bhakt, and Agni is Indra's bhakt, which means that they are participating in the glory of each other. Right. If you look at Panini, which is slightly later than Yask, before Christ, Panini actually defines the use of term bhakt as not someone only devoted and devoted to God, but as someone who loves maybe a dish, maybe a city. So he mentions bhakt of Mathura okay. as well as the bhakt of Krishna and Vasudev. Right. So you, if you are a lover of Mathura, if you love your city which is Mathura, you are bhakt of Mathura. Right. Or otherwise you are a bhakt of Dev or whatever. You can be even bhakt of a person. Yes, of course. Of course. <coughs> but essentially the idea was participation. That was the dominant idea. But to cut a very long story short, historically, by and by, this idea of participation was marginalized and sidelined. And the idea of devotion to a king, to a god, to a cult, to a figure, it evolved. The important role played by the so-called medieval bhakts, starting from Namdev, was to reclaim the original idea of bhakti, that is the participative nature of bhakti. Okay? 
and that is why Ananta Das described Namdev as the first bhakt in Kali Yuga. Mind you, first bhakt. I mean, Ananta Das was aware that Kali Yuga starts with the end of Mahabharata, mm -hmm. but he does not count anybody as bhakt in this whole period. Namdev, according to him, is the first bhakt mm -hmm. because, if I quote, Kaljog Pratham Namdev Bhaiya Kesav Apne Kar Kar Leya. Mm -hmm. Namdev is the person who has Kesav in his hand, who controls Kesav. Mm -hmm. So this is the old sentiment of participation. Now, when a word like bhakt comes into the political sphere, no, no, I am coming to context. that. So this was the idea of participation, and not only amongst the nirgun bhakts, but the supposedly conservative bhakts, mm -hmm. the sagun bhakts. They are also one thing is very clear, Nilanja. Mm -hmm. Bhakti does not come without vivek. Mm -hmm. Bhakti and vivek; these are two qualities which they require of a human being. Okay, whether it is Kabir Das or it is Sur Das or it is Mirabai or whosoever. Now the current bhakti, the kind of bhakti we are talking about, it has a clearly antagonistic relation to any kind of vivek. That bhakti was not possible without vivek. But here you do you have to negate vivek. You have to first of all surrender your vivek. Yes. <laughs> to express <laughs> bhakti, you have that to surrender is the your vivek. Yeah. The kind of bhakti we are talking of today. The first condition of that bhakti is to surrender your vivek. The first condition of that bhakti was to sustain your vivek, even if you are supposedly conservative in certain social matters. That does not allow you to completely surrender your vivek and to justify everything which is offered to you. I mean, Tulsidas is also quite critical of certain things which he does not like. He is supposed to be the most conservative of all of them, right. but uh, he is very critical of a social system which leads to poverty, right. to hunger, to famine and all that. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me get in Professor Mukhya on this. You know, what we are talking, we are seeing it in the historical context. Within the political sphere, it is not that what we are seeing now is happening for the first time. No, there no, is a, no. There is a, there no. Is a, there is a yes, 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 yes. If we actually start saying, you know, that the warning signs that we should not really start deifying political leaders, you know, this is something the warnings were set first by Jawaharlal Nehru way back in 1937 when he wrote that famous art, you know, essay. essay. Yeah, you know, he said the intolerance of others and a certain contempt yeah. for the weak and the inefficient. Yeah. This is what he wrote about himself. Uh, there is this also very important speech which was given by uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar yeah. in the Constituent Assembly where he says, in India, bhakti or what may be called the path of devotion or hero worship plays a part in its politics unequaled in magnitude by the part it plays in the politics of any other country. Bhakti in religion may be a road to salvation of the soul, Pushottam, as you are saying, but in politics, bhakti or hero worship is a sure yes, road to degradation or eventual dictatorship. If I may we have seen, to, we have seen Lohia also. Yeah. Lohia also was very critical and he actually said that this country has been traditionally a country of Pratima Puja. <laughs> So now we construct, he was obviously referring to Jawaharlal Nehru. Yeah, yeah. So we, we also construct the Pratimaj yeah, yeah. of yes. leaders and, and start Prof working. Professor Mukhya, but there is a difference between what we are talking about even within the political yes. sphere and what we are seeing in the now. As how would you say that are the essential differences and as to how this has become more vulgar? You know, uh, before I come to that, I think I like to, I like to, although we are discussing it in the Indian context, uh, uh, Bhakti or devotion or uh, loyalty, uh, these are not specific to a particular space or time. These are right. qu quite universal, you know. And I think uh, one quick distinction I like to make uh, uh, between the devotion or what we might call bhakti in the Western right. concept and the Indian one right. is that, uh, uh, for example, one the, the great French historian Marc Bloch uh, once wrote that, uh, uh, when you go to the church and play, pray before the Lord, you bend your knees and, you know, you, there, even now you, there is a sort of plank uh, there where you can bend, bend your knees and, and, and pray, to the, pray to the Lord. He uh, says that this is, this is a replica of pray, uh, a vassal praying to his Lord, you know, submitting himself to the Lord, Lord. and praying to him, you know, to accept <coughs> his submission. So here is a complete submission here which is unquestioned. Mm -hmm you know, uh, uh, and which is, as Purushottam was saying, which is in a way uh, uh, antithetical to any kind of, you know, thinking of your own, any question of your own, you know, you have to submit yourself completely, totally. Mm -hmm. 
the in in indian context uh, it's very interesting that uh, bhakti movement as we call it in the medieval indian context uh, it came as a liberating force you know rather than an enslaving force you see the one that uh, mark bloch is talking of is enslaving you know mm. the one that we are talk of in the indian context is liberating you know it li it liberated uh, uh, the the uh, in a way it was probably the the first democratic movement in uh, in in medieval indian history or probably in indian history before the national movement and so on so that it liberated you know right. now it liberated partly uh, or largely as uh, uh, purushottam was saying that you know it doesn't uh it doesn't lead to the surrender of your thinking of your vivek you know but a, it's a it's a it's a it's a, uh, a bhakti grown out of your own thinking rather than your 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 unthinking devotion you know so so uh, it is not demanded from you but it is not demanded from you right uh, yeah. uh secondly <clears throat> here is a devotion not to a person but to god to an idea you know of god uh what has what it has turned into uh, not now but for a long time is uh, devotion to a person to an individual you know uh and it is this devotion to a person or an individual which has now come to a stage where uh, we have this the very meaning of bhakt has changed the very meaning of bhakt has become meaning a uh, bhakt of uh, narendra modi you know uh uh how has it come you, about you you have the word called modi bhakt you know modi and bhakt, people yeah. are proud to say you don't even say modi, modi bhakt you know you you bhakt 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 yeah you bhakt don't bhakt even bhakt say modi bhakt you know pehlaj nihalani you know the uh, who was <clears throat> one time the head of the uh, cbfc yes. he said that i am not ashamed to be a modi bhakt yeah I, several people said so that. it is now a statement you know today pushodam let me just uh, ask you you know it's so significant that we are having this discussion just a couple of days before smriti rani made this very famous statement you know the day narendra modi hangs his boots i am going to retire from politics now what does this reflect at one level this is also bhakti this is it is, it is. but what does it why is it coming up you know to my mind there are basically three reasons for this which is happening is that one is that that universally in the political process all political parties you have this universal emergence of the high command in certain parties it is much more you know you know strangulating than in other parties there is in other parties it is slightly possibly less then you also see in organize in parties which were known for organizational uh, structures existing like bjp for instance was categorized before it came to power in 2014 for the existence of a collegiate style of functioning within the party you know it's been destroyed 2015 uh lk advani and two other senior leaders wrote this letter demanding inner party democracy it has not been answered no questions have been given also most importantly is that you do not have any more ideological debates within the parties which is what leads uh, smriti rani to say she is in the bjp not because of the ideology of the bjp but because of narendra modi now this is pure bhakti in a very vulgar form which is existing in today's politics well uh, to continue with with the what uh, professor mukhia was saying that bhakti for those people in the medieval or early modern period was focused on god an idea whether in the form of an incarnation or in the form of nirvana or whatever and it just brings to my mind a very famous line from tulsidas which would be rather very fitting description for the reaction of goddess saraswati to the statements made by like mr nehlani and ms irani and the chopai is like this prakrit jan ki ne gun gana sir dhun gira lagi pachtana when people start adulating the ordinary mortal beings the saraswati the goddess of learning beats her head and repents that what is happening in my name hmm. so let us keep this distinction constantly in mind right. now about you see yes there has been high command culture in other parties True. there has been centralization especially from the time indira gandhi yes, came certainly. and started to change the culture but of congress but let me remind you one thing nilanjan after indira gandhi in indian politics at least and outside communist establishment it is for the first time that being critical of mr modi is equated with being anti national right. this is remarkable right. this is very remarkable to give their to give them due credit 
you know me and we know each other in, for so many years. Indira was India and in that's what I'm saying. was just in a slogan. But here it actually it is in effect. In effect and I'm talking of uh, BJP itself. Yes. I mean, I have been active as a commentator or as an academic for years. I had occasions of criticizing Mr. Ratal Bihari Vajpayee, Mr. Lal Krishna Advani. Every <laughs> other political party. <laughs> and I was never called anti-national for criticizing Mr. Vajpayee. Or criticizing the government. Dissent has been delegitimized in this particular Dissent regime. Dissent not has been delegitimized, it has been demonized. demonized. Sorry, it, it has been sorry. demonized. Sorry. I mean, if you are critical of a particular individual, it is exactly what Tulsi Das would really repent. Hmm. If you are critical of a particular individual, you are not only a non-Bhakt, you, you are a non-Indian. Hmm. That is the worst part hmm. of it. Yeah, I, I see it actually as a part of... Uh, a, a, what shall I say, a displacement of an old structure of polity by a new one, you know. Yeah. In the sense that, you know, uh, uh, I mean, I have been around long enough to have seen Prime Minister from Nehru onwards <laughs> to Mr. Modi. <laughs> we and, have had and, the fortune <laughs> of seeing only from Indira Gandhi onwards. <laughs> and we had the first two. Shastri also. <laughs> yeah. and Shastri not in my case. Uh, and seen how parliament functions and debates and arguments and so on, fierce arguments and so on and so forth, you know. Uh, but, you know, the, the uh, polity was not centered on the, in a way, delegitimization of debates which is taking place now. In fact, know? this is something which I see very interesting. You know, we keep on saying in the media, we say that we accuse the BJP of whataboutery. You ask yeah. a question, they yeah. say, what they'll, they'll reply by asking another question. Yeah. What is happening is we are seeing is that there is a criticism. They don't reply to no. the criticism. No. They raise further questions about the critic. Yeah. Pushwatam Agarwal, who is Pushwatam Agarwal? Pushwatam Agarwal was, that, was appointed so and so under this government. Yeah. Who is Professor Mukhya? Mm. He has written such and such book. For this, he received a grant from yeah. such and such person. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So because he's done this, his argument is false. There is a reason for that, Nilan. There is a reason for that. Political reasons we all know. We must also understand the psychological reasons. You see, I very personally, I mean, I am I very firmly believe that without being inadequate in your mental and psychological faculties, you cannot be a supporter of any authoritarian worldview. So when these kind of questions are raised, which you describe as uh, what about tree, it also indicates a deep-rooted uh, sense of lack of confidence and kind of insecurity. I mean, you this cannot... This insecurity is at a personal level in terms of no. the political power <coughs> no, that no, you no, hold. No, 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 Also, I think it's, ideological it's at, insecurity. It's at, it's, it is at the uh, collective cultural level and it is not confined to the present dispensation. Mm. See, for example, you cannot respond to the arguments of the so-called, to recall the title of a famous or infamous book, the eminent historians. Mm -hmm. You cannot <laughs> respond to their arguments. You cannot respond to a Romila Thapar, you cannot respond to a Harman Zumkiya, mm -hmm. you cannot respond to a Irfan Abib. So you raise questions about everything except their work. Their work, their proposal, that look, this is what I feel about medieval India, this is what I feel about this particular incident in ancient India. You do not talk about that thing. You cannot criticize or denounce that argument with the counter argument, with the counter facts, because you know that you cannot. This is as simple as that. Just to finish this point. This has reached, this has not started with Mr. Modi. This has reached its highest point with Mr. Modi where we have a situation that on the floor of the house, a minister uses the phrase intellectual terrorism. So that, there has been a long process which has resulted in the phrase like intellectual terrorism being used on the floor of the house. Uh, Professor Mukhya, we are not seeing personality uh, cult for the first time in Indian no, politics. Yeah, we have no. seen it previously also. But there is definitely a growing tendency to presidentialize every election. Uh, even a uh, municipal board elections is fought in the name of the leader. In India, there has been a tradition of, uh, you know, bowing to the personalities and but is it there also globally? You know, is it a political phenomenon? We are seeing it in the, in the United States also. Mm -hmm. So is it a part of a global trend? Yes. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, I, I'll come to that in a moment. But, you know, I, I earlier wanted to say that, you know, uh, there is probably a, 
a, a new kind of structure of polity evolving, which is replacing or displacing the old structure of debates and arguments and, and so on and so forth, whether in parliament or within your parties or outside in public, etc., where leaders would come and and answer questions, you know, uh, would participate in, 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 in debates with people uh, and answer their questions, etc. Now, now a structure is evolving, almost uh, has been established uh, uh, that, you know, leader is not really answerable to anyone. Mm -hmm. You are answerable to the leader, yes. leader is okay. not answerable okay. to you, you know. Therefore, the, the whole idea of bhakti has been, uh, or its distortion has been, has been taken to its highest limit where mm. uh, you don't ask any question, only the leader asks question or leaders doesn't even ask questions, leaders gives you his wisdom, you know, and you follow it, you know. So this whole polity is now revolving around, not about debates, whether you are right, you are, you are wrong, you are leftist, rightist, mm. centrist, whatever, whatever, uh, what are your economic policies, whatever, etc. But the leader is right, you know. Uh, Therefore, this structure of polity that is that is evolving, which is far more disturbing, you know, mm. uh, because in debates you can you know you can be proven right, wrong, whatever yeah. you yeah. can do. But you know this 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 th this thing about bhakti, you have to be loyal to me, mm. you know. Uh, again, not for the first time we have seen it in the Indra Gandhi's case, but in Indra Gandhi was you know has a democratic stream in her to, so she ordered elections and she lost the elections, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et but we don't see that democratic stream here, you know, not that Modi ji can withhold elections, you know, he can't. Right, he know. has to. He has to, you know. But uh, given to, given to uh, uh, himself probably or given to their new structure of polity that is evolving, probably they would like to do without elections, you know, if they right. could. You know. So I'm, I'm worried about that part of the bhakti, you know, rather than, uh, and your, your question now whether it is universal phenomenon. To a, to a certain extent, yes, it is a universal phenomenon, you know, but not to the extent that it is in India. I mean, Trump has his, his own, Trump is an obvious example which comes to one's mind. Trump has his own uh, following, very strong following, but he, you can criticize him to the, <laughs> To like hell to uh, in 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 the USA, you know, and and uh, or or Putin and so on and so forth, you know, so that uh, the 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 degree is not the same. The phenomenon is similar, but the degree is not the same as it is in India. Pushpa, the one last question as we get into the final part of this discussion, begin to run out of time. Quite often, it is said that Indian democracy has a self-corrective mechanism. Now in India, you know, we are seeing what we are seeing at the national level of bhakti is also visible at the state levels. Yes. You have various state leaders also who are requiring their own bhakti, you know, you have Mayavati, you have Mamta Banerjee, you had Jail Alita till, yeah, till yeah, very certainly, recently. Certainly. Now in a situation like this, when we are in what we call the election season, when elections are here, you know, within a month it is going to be announced and in two months we will be voting in different phases. Is there any reason for hope? Yes, there is a reason Are for hope, but not question, there is a reason for hope. There people is a beginning to question hope. bhakti. There is a reason for hope, certainly. And it is uh, uh, because of the awareness uh, which is uh, there and awareness in the sense of the failures of the government of the day. I am not uh, attributing any uh, positive value to the awareness generated by the electronic media. Hmm. This awareness is there in spite of that, not because of that. Right. Secondly, uh, we must understand that yes, there is corrective uh, potential in, in Indian system, but unfortunately, and this is a matter of great concern, the institutional arrangement here is certainly not as strong as for example in USA. Mm -hmm. So we cannot uh, just uh, s sit back and relax that well, yeah. Supreme Court will do its work, university will do its work. That is possible in USA, not in India. We know so the responsibility rests with every citizen. Exactly, because the so every citizen has to has to be aware that institutional arrangement is not that strong that we can uh, take some recourse to that. Secondly, a very important point which we must understand that again, it's a question of a certain mindset. We were talking of the tradition of personality cult, Indra Gandhi or even Atal Vari Vajpayee or whosoever. Here, the more important point or rather harmful thing is that the present God, Mr. Modi, loves his own voice too much. 
and doesn't bother about immaterial will, things like will, facts. Will on this, which, is, or, which, is, which is also which also becomes very dangerous when he and addresses the students, the young students, who might believe in some moment of bhakti that Alexander actually came up to Patli, <laughs> which he never came. <laughs> well, I, I just hope on this uh, note, you know, we'll conclude this discussion. <coughs> uh, thank you very much for being here because I just hope that uh, that the people who are promoting bhakti do start, uh, are actually living in what we call their own eco chambers. I just want to, before we conclude, read out what uh, the Irish patriot uh, Daniel O'Connell wrote about, uh, you know, this entire idea of gratefulness to a particular person or to a particular leader. He said that no man can be grateful at the cost of his honor. No woman can be grateful at the cost of her chastity. And most importantly here, no nation can be grateful at the cost of its own liberty. We must be conscious of our own liberty. And as we said that we must revive the Vivek in ourselves, the conscience in each one of us has to become much more vocal than it has been to be able to question things which are against the basic culture and our own, you know, honor, liberty, idea, that is what we have to protect. Thank you very much for watching this program.